In this biostats video, we'll talk about risk. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Starting off with relative risk reduction, so that will be the percentage decrease in disease risk due to an intervention. So an example of that would be a study that finds metformin lowers the risk of type 2 diabetes from 10% to 5% would have a relative risk reduction of 50%. The way I remember that is that you have a relative reduction. So the relative reduction from 10% to 5% is 50%. Contrast that with absolute risk reduction, which is the difference in disease risk between treated and untreated groups. An example of that would be if you have a cholesterol-lowering medication that reduces heart attack risk from 10% to 7%, then you'd have an absolute risk reduction of 3%. So again, with relative risk, you're looking at a percentage decrease in disease risk due to, due to an intervention. Um, so if you take you know, 10% going to 5%, that's 50% of the original. So that would be your relative risk reduction because this is a relative reduction in risk. Whereas for absolute risk reduction, you would take 10% from our example here, minus 7%, which equals 3%. And this is an absolute value in reduction in disease risk based on treatment. Now, our attributable risk will be the difference in disease risk between an exposed group and an unexposed group. So for example, if you have one group of um, individuals in the study who were uh, smokers and lung cancer risk is 20% in that group and 5% uh, cancer risk in a group of non-smokers and the attributable risk of smoking is 15%. Essentially you're comparing a group that had some exposure, in this case it's smoking, and you're comparing that with a baseline risk or baseline um, incidence rate of um, of lung cancer. So in this case it would be 20% minus 5% which is 15%. And these values will be important when we talk about number needed to treat. So number needed to treat or NNT is the number of patients who must receive treatment to prevent one instance of disease or prevent one adverse outcome. So your equation will be 1 over the absolute risk reduction. And remember, the absolute risk reduction is essentially your difference in disease risk between your treated and untreated groups. So you calculate the absolute risk reduction by subtracting risk in the treatment group compared to the non-treatment group. So then you can use 1 over the absolute risk reduction uh, to calculate your number needed to treat. So an example would be uh, if a new heart medication has a number needed to treat of 25, it means you need to treat 25 patients uh, to prevent one heart attack. And we'll talk about more examples in just a moment. But moving on, let's talk about number needed to harm. So number needed to harm will be the number of individuals that are exposed to a risk factor for one additional adverse event to occur. Uh, and this can be from something like a medication or an exposure, but your equation will be one over your attributable risk. And remember, attributable risk is basically how much you can blame a particular exposure for being associated with uh, another adverse outcome, which is, again, calculated by uh, subtracting your risk in your exposed group compared to a baseline. Remember, we used the smoking example. Uh, an example of number needed to harm would be that if a painkiller has a number needed to harm of 200 for GI bleeding, one in every 200 users essentially will develop bleeding due to the medication. That's how you should think about it. Um, so you think about number needed to harm as the villain. You know, how many people need to be exposed before something bad happens? So let's move on to some practice questions. I know a lot of you have been waiting for these. So let's say we have a 64 years old gentleman with type 2 diabetes enrolled in a clinical trial testing a new statin. So over a five year period, 10% of patients in the placebo group experience an MI, while only 6% of those in the treatment group had the same outcome. The sample, the study had a sample size of 1,000 patients in each group. What is the absolute risk reduction associated with the statin? So we're looking at absolute risk reduction. And absolute risk reduction, if we remember, it will be our incidence in the exposed group minus the incidence in the unexposed group. 
So we'll have 10% minus 6%, which is equal to 4%. So it should be C. That's correct. So question number two, a trial examines a drug used for primary stroke prevention in elderly patients with AFib. In the control group, 8% of patients experienced a stroke, whereas only 4% in the treatment group did. Researchers want to determine the relative reduction in risk to quantify the proportional benefit of this intervention. What is the relative risk reduction? So if you remember, relative risk reduction is essentially comparing what percentage of risk changes and in this case, we would have 8% going to 4%. So we can calculate that with 8 over minus 4 divided by 8 times uh, 100, which is equal to 50%. So we would pick C, 50%. And that's, a, that's the correct answer. All right, question number three. A new anticoagulant is tested in a cohort of patients with DVT. The incidence of PE over one year was 6% in the placebo group and 3% in the treatment group. The study investigators want to report the number needed to treat to prevent one pulmonary embolus. What is the number needed to treat? So remember the NNT is, is equal to 1 over the absolute risk reduction. So the absolute re risk reduction in this case is 6 minus 3%, which is 3%. And so this would be 1 divided by 0 0.03, which I know is like about 33. So I would circle D, 33. And that is correct. All right, question number four. Let's say an NSAID is associated with an increased risk of GI bleeding. A cohort study finds that GI bleeding occurred in 4% of users compared to 1% of non-users of the NSAID. The physician wants to estimate the number of patients who would need to be treated with this NSAID for one additional patient to be harmed. What is the number needed to harm of this NSAID? Again, our uh, number needed to harm will be 1 over the attributable risk, which is basically how much of the uh, risk you can blame on a particular intervention. And in this case, our attributable risk is equal to 4% minus 1%. So this would be 1 over 3%, which again is about 33. So the answer is C, 33. Question number five. In a study of smoking and lung cancer, 20% of smokers develop lung cancer compared to 1% of non-smokers over a 10-year period. The researchers want to quantify how much risk is due to the exposure itself. What is the attributable risk of lung cancer from smoking? So we've already talked about this, but attributable risk will be uh, basically subtracting the risks between the two groups. So it'll be 20 minus 1 equals 19%, and that will be C. Question number six, a new migraine prophylactic medication reduces the incidence of migraines from 40% to 30% over six months. A patient asks how many people would need to use the drug to pre prevent one person from getting a migraine. So what is a number needed to treat? So this will be 40. So you want, again, for your number needed to treat, that will be one over your absolute risk reduction. In this case, absolute risk reduction is 40 minus 30%, which is 10%. So then 1 over 10% is 10. So this will be B. All right, question number seven. A vaccine trial shows that the incidence of a disease was reduced from 2% to 1% with the vaccine. So the pharmaceutical representative tells the physician that the vaccine reduces risk by 50%. The physician says that although this is technically correct, it can be misleading. And what measure is the representative referring to? So you see that there's a relative risk reduction by 50%. So there's a 50% reduction in risk. And remember, anytime we have that percentage reduction in risk, you want to be thinking of your relative risk reduction, which is B. Question number eight. 
in a large trial, a blood pressure medication reduces stroke risk from 1.2% to 1%. Although this difference is significant, statistically significant, the treating physician is not enthusiastic about prescribing it widely. Which of the following explains the concern? A. The relative risk is too high. B. The absolute risk reduction is too small. C. The number needed to harm is too low. Or D. The attributable risk is unknown. So here, you want to be seeing that the risk, re the risk reduction is from 1% 0.2% to 1%. So even though it's statistically significant from the study, it's still a very small absolute risk reduction. So B would be our, our correct answer. Question number nine. A physician is choosing between two drugs to prevent stroke. Drug A reduces stroke from 10% to 6%, while drug B reduces it from 10% to 5%. Assuming costs and side effects are the same, which drug has the lower number needed to treat? So looking at number needed to treat, so for drug A, you have a reduction in stroke risk from 10% to 6%. So your number needed to treat would be one, again, over the attributable relative risk or absolute risk reduction, sorry, which would be uh, one divided by 4%, which is equal to 25. And for drug B, you would have 10 minus 5%, which equals 5. So you would have a number needed to treat of 20. So B would have your lower number needed to treat. All right, that'll do it. Join us in the next episode.